Okay, so I think we have started. Welcome, participants. Thank you for joining. Uh, so we'll just maybe give it another minute or so for people to join. Okay, we've got about, I think about 30 people registered to watch this live. There will be a recording of this as well. So if anyone that needs to leave early, um, we can send this recording to you later, but we will be sending a circulating recording of this uh, to anyone that registered. But thank you for joining us. So today we are talking about how to prep your child, how to set them up for academic success for GCSEs, A-levels and beyond. So I'm Stephanie from the ADHD Advocate and we've got Eleni as well from the ADHD Advocate. Yes, hello. And Stephanie and I are both uh, parents of children with ADHD. So we uh, first and foremost are right there with you. We certainly understand firsthand the challenges of um, helping a child revise. Um, I'm based in New York and our exams are slightly different, but the process that we're going to be explaining is uh, by no means dissimilar. So uh, these are lessons for life, um, especially acknowledging uh, the ADHD brain, um, how unique it is. And we're gonna show you how to make the most of these gifts and um, certainly um, when your child is revising. Yeah, so what we'll do, we've got a few slides that we're gonna just uh, show you. And if you've got any questions as well, I'm not sure how much time we'll have, but if you enter anything into the chat, we can see your comments. But if there are any questions following this webinar, just shoot us an email and uh, maybe we can kind of compile the questions together and send in an email all the answers. But well done for coming and joining, carving out space to learn more about how you can prep your child to succeed. As Eleni was saying, it's, it's really difficult when you've got ADHD as a parent yourself, but particularly obviously trying to parent your children with ADHD, it's extremely challenging. And that's on so many levels. The first, first main reason is because we don't have the ADHD lens. So often a parent, child won't understand they've got ADHD and there's a negative narrative going on. There's very much in all the negative messaging that's being received by that child. Unfortunately, sometimes by us parents too, when we don't know what's going on, it can really have a very damaging effect um, that's gonna damage their self-esteem. And also they're gonna probably start adjusting their expectations in relation to any potential that, um, that, that they have. And this is where we want to intervene. So I'm gonna start the actual slides here. Um, Thank you, Dick. Eleni, can you see the slides? I cannot. Uh, yes, there we are. Yes, perfect. perfect. Okay, guys, so let's start. So today, as Eleni said, we're gonna try and educate you very quickly to understand ADHD in a strengths-based context for revision. We're gonna help you, give you a guide on how to create structures and support that are required. And um, we've actually got an academic success program very exciting news. This is the first one we've launched and we're looking at launching that in March, just in time for these DCSEs and A-levels. And we'll be talking a bit more about the program and what it um, comprises of towards the end of this webinar. So as Eleni was saying, we are parents of children with ADHD and we also coach a lot of students with ADHD. And we have learned quite a few things along the way about these students that would love to share with you. So yes. first of all, are the challenges. So Lenny is gonna take us through some of these challenges that we see. Yes, absolutely. And many of the queries that we get uh, from parents on behalf of their children are very much around these uh, issues, which seem to be uh, pretty consistent. And the first is that um, our teens, our students don't really understand the way their brains work. And unfortunately, the, as Stephanie said, the narrative can be quite, uh, it, it's not positive, but what we can do through coaching and through this program is to sort of peel away that negative narrative and help them understand that it's a unique gift that we have. And let's figure out a way to make these strengths work for you, um, not only in revising, but beyond. So first uh, and foremost, as Stephanie said, is that ADHD lens. And that's where the parent education piece will come in as part of this whole program for you and for your children so that they can understand it's not, it's not personal, it's not willful, this isn't a um, a, a format that is um, not possible for them to succeed. It very much is. We just have to translate it into a way that is going to make that work for them. A lot of this is due to executive function challenges. And 
uh, many people without ADHD don't have a problem with executive function. That's sort of the um, get it done button in your brain, if you will. So you sort of know how to plan and organize and manage your time. But these are really difficult concepts for the ADHD brain that really need to be practiced and learned and repeated. And because of these challenges, revising can be even more, even more difficult than it already is. We also know that teens are going to oppose what their parents say, ADHD or not. <laughs> I think Stephanie and I are both uh, right in the throes of that. And um, certainly um, the uh, conditions that can go exist with ADHD and petitional um, ODD, um, kids are gonna butt heads with us just because of what we say, even if we tell them the sky is blue. And that's just something we have to take into account. Uh, they're also very easily distracted. Our ADHD brains are wired for authentic interest, right? And if something is not authentically interesting or worse yet, really not interesting, um, we're gonna do anything possible to keep feeding our brains interesting things that keep us motivated and engaged. Um, so we also address this in the program to keep, uh, to keep them on track for the subjects in revising that maybe aren't of interest. They can also lack motivation and our ADHD brains can be really, um, we, we can be time blind. If there's not a fixed specific deadline, um, it's very hard for us to stay motivated and on track um, unless that deadline is in June. So uh, even though we do have a concrete deadline for many of these exams, um, that seems like ages from now. So having these weekly accountability meetings um, with what we call a body double strategy that someone is actually gonna keep you accountable, your student accountable, um, is enormously helpful because it also removes that role from you, the parent, and sort of shifts it onto us. So not only are we keeping them accountable, we're doing it from that through that ADHD lens and helping children, uh, students, kind of understand maybe why they're they're not being successful in this area. Yeah, it's important, isn't it, Eleni? Because quite often, because of all the negative messaging, we found when the child kind of first starts coaching, uh, they've pretty much shut down. They've lost hope. Uh, they've just lost hope, they've stopped trying, and that is not good. So the main thing that we need to do is to help them get, get perspective, um, understand that it is a matter of can't versus won't in terms of maybe getting started in terms of trying to resist the distraction, you know, because they've got to be able to understand how, you know, their brain's wide in order to be able to set themselves up to either eliminate that thing that's going to get in the way or at least mitigate against it. So really kind of helping them understand that it's, it's, it's not something that they're choosing, that their brain is wide in a certain way and that it can be different for them, that there, there is hope. So we very much kind of, that's how we start um, getting our, you know, our students engaged for them to be able to start telling a new, more empowering story about themselves. And then we look at, you know, obviously all the kind of equipping them with the you know, strategies and structures to, um, to revise, to get the work done. But the first part, the mindset piece is so important. Yes, absolutely. Um, and along with that, Stephanie, when they do feel sort of alienated and alone and sort of hopeless, um, this program seeks to um, address that. And by having accountability and other students um, who may be feeling uh, the same way they do, if not um, facing similar challenges, um, is a real source of support and strength. So that too is, is quite helpful. Um, and lastly, um, our ADHD brains um, are, can be um, compared to being a sprinter. So we do really well with our bursts of energy and intense interest, uh, but revising is a marathon. So it's almost a different skill set that we're asking them to use and one with which they're really maybe not so familiar or comfortable. So we address that as well, sort of revising for the, the long haul or marathon that they're about to, to enter. Yeah, it's, it's a tough gig. Uh, a, you know, GCSEs, A-levels, my, my daughter's just done 11 plus, for instance. Uh, you know, and that's really young. Um, and I'm, I'm sure parents with kids with um, that did 11 plus uh, know how difficult I'm sure that was trying to keep your child on task and, and keep them, you know, have with enough kind of uh, that, that mindset that to, to keep going. But what, what we've realized as well, though, again, the mindset piece is so important in terms of perspective. ADHD is a very prone to catastrophizing. Um, we, you know, there's a negativity bias in the brain that unfortunately only strengthens the more, you know, we go to the negative because nothing fuels yes. the brain more than negative emotion. And so it is very hard to break that. It's really, really hard. So it's, it's important again, you know, once they've got perspective, 
then that's something that they can kind of be more aware of and, and be more aware of that self-talk. And then obviously through strategies, equipping them, they start kind of succeeding and that builds up evidence, evidence that can back up this more positive mindset. And the thing is ADHD is need evidence. You, you can't kind of blow smoke up their behinds. <laughs> Just to be honest, I'm sure we've all tried it. It doesn't work. You know, particularly us parents with ADHD, I think we yeah. all appreciate that too. Uh, we, we, you know, we need evidence. And these kids, as well as that, they need to know that there is a point to what they're doing. So the fuel for an ADHD brain is authentic interest. That is the fuel, isn't it, Lenny? Very much so, very much so. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't always go hand in hand with revising. Um. <laughs> exactly, this is the problem and that's why we're here. Yes. That's why we're here because most ADHD is most of us, right? Exams, well, where's the real authentic interest in that? There's not a lot. Some ADHDs actually do thrive on competition and proving themselves. And those ADHDs generally are the ones that perform really well in exams. They, they love, they actually get a dopamine hit doing the exam. Um, I actually, for one, was one of those ADHDs. I was that type. Um, I kind of like got all the information and then kind of was looking forward to the exam where I could just kind of get it out and show it off. It was very, and also I'll float it out of my brain. That was also yes. another reason. But yeah, some ADHDs thrive on that, unfortunately. Many do not. <laughs> um, but actually, I, I say to people, you know, and I say this a bit sheepishly, they're the clever ADHDs. They're the ones that actually have, you know, original thinking and challenge why they do what they do. Me personally, being a forgetful fairy type, sure, I thrived off the exams and performing, but I didn't actually question what the relevance mm. of the things that I was learning. I just did it because it was expected. And I'm, I'm a people pleasing ADHD and most of us are with rejection sensitivity. And for me, that translated into performing, achieve, perform. Um, whereas a lot of ADHD is that I think are smarter, sorry. Uh, they, they go, hmm, you've asked me to perform, but how is this relevant to my life? You know, this right. is my time, right? And I think that that's brilliant. I think those are the ADHDs that generally do go on to do great things after school because they're able to choose, you know, what they concentrate on. They're able to choose, you know, how they, how they learn. Um, and they can really invest in the things that um, make a difference to them and often make a difference to, to other people in the world. Um, so it's really important that those type of ADHDs that we coach, that even though they may not perform, even with support, maybe they might not quite get the results that they want, but, to keep that perspective and that confidence and have a, a vision of what they could do aside from maybe the thing they want to get into. Um, but that's so important for, for, for them to be able to, to see that, to have that perspective. So we really do emphasize and do a bit of work on that, don't we, Lenny? It certainly is, absolutely. And as we'll uh, explain uh, in, in a bit, um, how we help students recognize that even before they get started. Yeah, okay. So specifically with this program we've got uh, coming up, um, we're gonna be helping both, both the child, both your child and yourselves to look through an ADHD lens. And uh, that's done obviously through psychoeducation, but um, we'll be doing like a one and a half hour workshop before the official program starts for the kids. And where we'll be talking about ADHD and all the traits and challenges, you can bring your questions. And that will actually be with your children. And the reason for that, <laughs> is because I'm sure the children will also get quite a bit of satisfaction um, finally as well having a third party explain to you guys that actually no these things are hard this is a legitimate need yes. you know, this isn't bribery this is the ADHD brain that's right know, needing some yes. kind of interest it needs the dopamine hit yeah so it's, it's important that you're both you're both there um at that workshop, isn't that right, Lenny? Yes, and so Stephanie was saying, uh, we're going to um, identify um, just some of the strengths in the way that your child's brain um, does work. So it's not a uh, as much of a mystery why some things are difficult because as Stephanie said, our brains are really fueled by authentic interest. And if your brain is not um, wired to be engaged in something that you're being asked to do, it becomes much more challenging. So we'll be able to shed a bit of light around that as well. Yeah, and as we said, for, for those ADHDs, the very uh, strategic ones that need to have a valid reason, compelling reason to do anything, uh, the second workshop that we'll be doing the weekend before the program kicks off is in relation to finding out their why. 
right? The why. And it's so important for an ADHD to be clear on that. In fact, I did a coaching session last week with a uh, GCSE student and uh, she'd been accepted to some youth kind of ambassador UN style um, conference thing. And she, she thought it was very good. Uh, she had to sit and listen a lot, probably too much. Um, but I said, oh, well, fantastic. So it was good. It was great. Well, what made you do it? And she said, oh, they look it on my CV. I went, okay, that's fantastic. For what? And she goes, so I can get, you know, into a good uni. Wonderful. Um, so what are you going to do at uni? What, why? How come? What did you want to actually do at university? I don't know. Ah, so <laughs> this is the problem. Yeah. You know, yeah. most of our ADHD is, you know, we, we don't stop actually. A lot of us don't actually know what we want. And that's not just the students. Let's be honest. A lot of adults, same thing. Um, we don't know what we want. Um, a lot of us go on autopilot and just yes. with our RSD feel as if we just need to have all these things, all these backups the best we can in order to get into the good university. But, you know, where's the authentic interest? Knowing that's the fuel for the ADHD brain that is lacking and that's a problem. Yes, that, that's a huge piece of the clarity around the ADHD lens for ourselves and for our children. Um, where we think they'll thrive um, can be very different from where they actually want to thrive. And sometimes we just don't, um, we don't hear them. And it doesn't have to be a sort of verbal thing. Um, many aren't able to do that, but just to pay attention to the signs and the signals that they are showing us with how they work and the questions they ask and what they do. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's, it's hard, particularly if you've got ADHD as a parent, creating and holding space is, is like the hardest thing to do. Um, we get it as parents uh, with ADHD, with children with ADHD, but um, it's really important that a space is held. Um, for them, you know, to, for us to kind of listen to them, but also from what we found in coaching, often they haven't held a space for themselves to get clear about what they want either. They haven't been able to work out what it is that actually does work out for them. So they're not able to tap into those things that do work because out of sight, out of mind, right? Weak working memory is one of our issues with ADHD, which is very frustrating. Um, and this is what part, you know, part of this program is designed to really be able to help, you know, we're holding that space for these kids to get really clear, right? About how their brain works and, you know, what it is they want, right? Because we know that authentic interest is the motivator, the, the fuel. So if they can get clear about what they really want, right? They can kind of live on pull rather than push because that never goes well for an ADHD. Good analogy. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And around all of this, the support that is built into this program is from um, all of us with an ADHD um, lens as well, um, either as coaches, as parents, um, specialists we're bringing in to also shed some light on the revising process um, with an acknowledgement of how the ADHD brain um, works best. So there, there's all of that as well. Yeah, and I'm really looking forward to the, the the weekend before the program starts when when the students just the students themselves are working on their why, and so we'll be giving exercises for them to do um, in the lead up, or maybe we use part of the session for them to do it. Given a lot of ADHDs need that that implementation um, oh, yes. kind of accountability to do things. Uh, so yeah, what we're going to do, we are going to um, provide that space for them to get clear on their strengths. Mm -hmm. Um, their achievements, their, you know, value, skills and talents, just so that they get a much clearer picture of what it is that they can and want to do. And so the more specific that they can be, the more compelling that vision is, then that's what we're going to use to fuel, or partly anyway, to fuel them and encourage them always to connect to their why. And as as parent, that's also our job right? Because we all know we forget our own whys. Those of you that have coached and have set goals, uh, just today I was coaching an adult and we had to go back to the plan <laughs> that he wrote because he forgot to look at it, which it, it happens. This it is just happen. the way it is, isn't it, Lenny? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, as Stephanie uh, and I have both said, um, being parents, having other things sort of get in the way, we are often put ourselves last uh, for many reasons. And um, that's not a great message to send to our children as well, right? Especially when they're revising. Um, we want to make sure that they can prioritize what's important to them and um, understand the why, as Stephanie said, to help them get there.
Yeah, a lot of us ADHDs, we don't do well with too much choice. We really don't. Uh, um, it's, it's just too much load and overwhelm. And with that kind of perfectionism that comes from rejection sensitivity, does not help us make decisions. So what the program also provides is a structure, uh, a framework. So, you know, they don't have to kind of decide um, and to carve out time to do this or that. You know, some of those times, like for study halls, for instance, that we're doing, will be provided for them. Uh, and we're going to be keeping the key lessons that they need to keep inside in mind on a, you know, several times a week, basically, basis. So it, it's got all the elements that our students, that we know our students with ADHD need to do as well as they can with what they have at this time. That's really important to note. Um, and again, emphasizing perspective and please taking context into account. I can't tell you how many coaching clients we have that come into session berating themselves about something, failing to actually take in, in, you know, in context, what's happened for them, you know, that day, that week. And sometimes these are massive things like a parent getting cancer, but the ADHD, it just, it's just not there when they're, you know, when they're measuring themselves on their performance, it just, it's not there. And so we, we definitely make sure that that is taken into account. Because we're way, way too hard on ourselves, aren't we, Lenny? Yes, yes. And just to wrap up on this slide, um, probably the biggest, uh, greatest help we could offer is to remove that um, that piece of uh, the parental involvement with revising. Um, it shifts to us. So you don't become the one that reminds your child to revise, who is asking them why they're not revising. Um, suddenly the whole conversation around revising can become you know, acrimonious really fast and ongoing because we're looking at what, 16 weeks or so of revising <laughs> before the exams are done. So certainly removing that piece uh, will help you and your family dynamic. And you can leave it to us, leave it with us to to address the challenges that are getting in the way because we understand them uh, maybe in a way that, that you don't, um, nor would you. Um, uh, this is what we do. We're coaches and we certainly understand how the ADHD brain can get in the way of things that uh, might seem very, uh, very different to others. Yeah, really good point. So, I mean, not to say that you will not be involved at all, obviously. It's really- Oh no, of course. <laughs> <laughs> involved, relax. yes, of course. Oh, yes, of it. course. We got it. No, we're not saying that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you guys are your, your, your child's most important body double. And I'm sure some of you have some beautiful relationships with your children. You're their safe person. So I'm sure sometimes the relationship doesn't feel very beautiful. There's probably a lot of meltdowns that you get to deal with. Thank you for clarifying that, Stephanie. Yes, of course. <laughs> Yeah, but it's, look, it, they say it takes a village to raise a, an adhd -er. takes obviously a lot more to um, help an adhd -er succeed academically, I would say. So that's what we're here for, right? Working together and being able to, you know, improve that relationship so that you can be there as a body double, but in the way that your child needs you to be in terms of like yes. being their champion, you know, helping that's them right. be perspective again, encouraging them helping them get sure. out of the way, yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, so we're all working together. So we kind of operate, we'll just quickly, briefly run you through kind of the program and the elements. Um, now, the weekend before, that's the kind of intensive where we've got the workshops where we talk to you and your student about, you know, ADHD, give you the right lens to look through ADHD. Um, and then the second part of the workshop that weekend will be the students doing that work, really important work on the mindset piece. So working out their mission as well, what it is they want to do, right? Um, Cause that's gonna be the pull for them. We're gonna keep on making sure they get back to that why to kind of keep that relevance and uh, motivation up. So that's number two. Now steps three to six. Um, now, what we're gonna be doing in the first week of the program each day. So I think it's between, is it seven till eight learning, I think? The time uh, it's two hours so I think it's seven to nine I think that's yeah so, something like that we will we will get you the yes. timetable we've got yes. the details of the program we'll send out after this um but basically what what we found with our students with uh, ADHD is they're not they don't quite know what they know right usually they come to us and they are overwhelmed mm -hmm. they're out I don't know anything I'm going to fail because they've got no visibility. A lot of us ADHD is we, there's too much in our heads. Now, when it comes to GCSEs, A-levels, I mean the content, right? 
it's massive amounts. Enormous. It's enormous, so you don't blame them. So what, what we do um, in this particular um, exercise on the what, we basically do like a gap analysis. So we kind of work out, we sit, you know, the kids will do the exercise in session, getting, you know, clear on kind of what their subjects are and even using kind of scoring in terms of like their, what they know, getting really specific about what they don't know and then kind of action steps in relation to the things they need to do to fill in those gaps. So we all do that in session, because let's face it, give it to the child to do for homework. It's not going to be done. So a lot of this program, we do the important stuff together. We implement. Yes. Yeah. And then once I can tell you, every time we do this with a student, once it's out on paper, out of their head, it's specific. It's so much more manageable. And actually yes. quite often they realize, oh, actually I'm, I know a lot more. I'm in a much better position than I thought I was. Yeah. And that is so crucial, right? To kind of getting started with the revision. So we get it all out of the head onto the paper and we can manage it, get perspective again. The next thing we do, the timetable, the when. Um, so we're basically going to be looking at the planning, how, you know, when are they going to study? And then particularly when are the actual exams? Because again, ADHD, we operate on a now versus not now basis. I have exams. In our heads, it's like they're all happening tomorrow, every single one. <laughs> I need to study, but then I can't possibly study for all of them for tomorrow. So I just won't do anything. Yeah, that's what we see a lot of, don't we, Lenny? So overwhelming. And we just absolutely shut down. And having um, knowing that there is um, a time on your calendar on a weekly, regular basis to actually sit down and revise um, and somebody's going to check that you're there um, is almost enormously, it, it's a relief really. So the student doesn't have to figure out, well, when they can fit it in. Um, this is something in their diaries that um, is fixed. And it's, it, it is a sense of relief that they don't have to work this out on their own. Yeah, we've got to take away the kind of decision analysis paralysis. We're very yes. much about, yeah, helping the child get out of their own way, having it visible. I, we, we talk a lot in coaching about the ADHD VAT tax. Um, yeah, you know, we've got to make it visible, accessible, and tangible. Visible, yes. accessible, tangible. Um, and we, we look at this when we look at strategies as well. Trying yes, to and study aids, yep. Yeah, we do all of that. So we also look at the study environment because, again, it's really impactful for our ADHDs. Eleni, what have you seen in relation to some of your students? You know, we all think that students, uh, all students can maybe sit quietly in the library for hours and, you know, if they organized books sort of lined up and take breaks at regular intervals. And we all know that, that that's not how most kids operate. Um, so finding the environment that works best for them, is there some music in the background? Is it um, a situation where we need to set up really structured breaks? So a certain amount of time off with a certain amount of time on. All of this is really gonna be um, individual, individualized, but acknowledging that um, you know, some kids read best when they're in a beanbag on the floor. And that doesn't mean they're you know, flipping through something irrelevant. It just means that's how they can stay engaged. So we acknowledge all of these as parts of the where and um, see how we can make it work for, for your student. Yeah, and then finally, study aids, the how, um, obviously, which is very important. And again, what Eleni was saying, it, it will differ from child to child. No two ADHDs are the same. One thing that parents struggle with, what we've seen, is, you know, parents obviously get anxious about some of our children's how, particularly yeah. if you don't have the ADHD lens, right? And because the problem, the thing is with ADHD is, you know, what we've seen in coaching is that at the end, the main thing is that they're getting what they need to get done. They're accessing it, but they're, they might be accessing it in a different way, but it's really important to be able to facilitate them being able to do it their way, to honor that. And that, I think that's why coaching is so successful for ADHD is because yes. you know, they're the expert. We honor that the, the, the student or the adult is the expert in their own life. We help them find the evidence for when maybe that particular strategy worked. Then we help them, you know, give that accountability and help them structure their environment to be able to access that strategy going forward. Yeah. And this is the piece that is, um, you know, if nothing else, the most um, significant to kind of recognize for the beyond part of our, our presentation. So even though we're setting them up to um, for this to, this process to serve them well in revising, this is really what they need to understand about themselves as they move on and move beyond the exams. So this is a really crucial piece that we, we help them formulate. 
Yeah, and because um, I know we're running out of time, but what I was thinking we could do, um, we did a webinar actually on these six steps that we've recorded. Um, so what we'll do when we send an email out, we'll obviously send an email with this recording, as well as the one we did that kind of sets out the six steps, which kind of look a bit like this, you know, mindset, talk about the why, there's a gap analysis example, um, you know, the when, you know, talk about the timetable, the how, some of the specific study kind of strategies, um, study aids and things like that. About, yeah. yeah, we've got a recommended product list for studying for, for students that we can share as well. So I think that would probably be helpful to send that out for you as well. So yes. you can have a look and see what it is that the children will actually be doing during that intensive week. But apart from that, the program. So it's not just that weekend and that week, obviously. We know that uh, our kids, our students, they need that accountability. They, they need kind of us to be regularly checking in. And so what the, what the program comprises of, it's basically over six weeks. So I'll stop my share actually right now. Okay. So yeah, the program is basically over six weeks. It starts on the 4th of March. So yep, 4th of March to the 25th of June. Uh, we kind of worked out that I think GCSEs, A-levels, the last ones end around 21 25th. June. Yeah, yes. or 25th. But parents, feel free to educate us on that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we will be we will flex to whatever kind of need the, the student that is enrolled has. But we basically will be doing see, some particular weekly recurring events. So every Monday, we have a kickstart the week for students every single Monday for, for those 16 weeks where the first 20 minutes, we will be speaking about a particular topic um, that addresses say an ADHD challenge. Um, and that could be in relation to specific exam, you know, techniques, uh, time management, planning, self-care, all that type of thing. And we'll have a referral partner that might come in, give a few tips, yes. subject specific as well, like English, maths, we've got a few tutors that specialize in um, SEM that we work with. So we'll be inviting them to speak for about 20 minutes, the first 20 minutes. Yes. Then the next 40 minutes, your kids will be in breakout rooms and they're gonna be discussing, you know, with the other students, what works for them and kind of implementing. Um, so there'll be some exercises and things so that they're gonna walk away with actual, you know, things to implement as opposed to just learning. Cause we know our, our ADHDs are not very big on the, just soak it all in. We're, we're good at the circuit. Well, take it in, then it's gone, and then nothing happens. That's right. Engagement. <laughs> yes. And, I, and that's, as Stephanie is saying, what, what this, uh, this program seeks to provide. Um, the second bit of that um, is called a study hall. And this is really sort of the, the, um, the main thrust of the accountability piece. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays for two hours, your child is invited to come and join us, and they turn their screen on and we see where everybody is. And that is the chance they have to get their work done while being accountable to everybody else that's there. Um, as Stephanie said, we don't do well when we're told to or asked to go and sort of get something done um, if it's not gonna be authentically interesting. So here we're creating a space for them and we're inviting them in and they have that time to make the most of their, of their revising um, for that evening. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's quite fun too. Um, we've done these before, we've done these for adults actually. Um, and the amount of things that people actually get done, things they've procrastinated on, yes. just because you're in a space where there's others that understand the challenge. There's no shame, finally, no guilt, no shame. Yes. We go around and ask everyone what they're doing or they put in the chat what they're going to do and everyone's screens are on so everyone can see each other. So again, us ADHDers, we, we tend to like to, Fit, you know, do what everyone else is doing in terms of, you know, be part of the team, don't let the team down. So it's a very, very good way of getting these uh, students to, to engage with their learning um, in a community of like-minded people. So, and then we've also got every Saturday morning, yeah, every Saturday morning, we have check-ins with the students. Very brief. Yes, <laughs> only 15 minutes, only 15 minutes, so don't worry. But what we've found, a lot of us ADHD is we waste the weekend students in particular so we want to these are actually called don't waste the weekend so saturday morning we check in with the students find out what they're planning to do right and uh, so that, again there's that accountability and again yes. there's that encouragement with their peers uh which is going to 
help them kind of end the weekend feeling again more motivated not i've wasted my weekend uh yeah so we've got this and also to sorry not to um to help them uh, manage their expectations of themselves um so to enjoy the weekend of course because self-care is absolutely crucial in this marathon that we're preparing for um so to help them set some realistic goals and realistic things that they want to accomplish and they can end the week of weekend as stephanie said on a high note um, and then begin fresh sort of on monday yeah so just to check in again as we've yeah. talked about the whole time because you know so much going on it's really hard to get clear so a check-in just helps the students gives them that space to get a bit clear to see everyone's in the same boat as well and also to get perspective again really want to emphasize that when we talk about academic success we're not talking about getting the results that maybe you you know the parents want their children to achieve we want to make sure we're taking you know we're setting achievable standards something again adhds do not do do well with um particularly the perfectionist types and that has not set them up for success particularly in later life yes. when we coach our adults in the workplace we yes. definitely can see the problems with that so let's you know it's all this is great because we're intervening early and that's why we talk about this these skills are going to help them not just with gcse's a levels university exams but it's for life because we're helping them you know you know hack their adhd brain yes. develop some self-compassion and, and, and start like being able to thrive with their ADHD and, and embrace, embrace it as opposed to feeling hopeless or there's something wrong with them. So yeah, it's so much more than just helping them get good marks. This program is so much yes. more. Yeah. Yes. So um, what we're gonna do, I can see that there was some Q and A, but um, yes, so how much the course is. What we're going to do, we're going to be circulating. Um, we've got like a, a proposal, so we're going to circulate that later today. That'll have the, um, all the different elements of the course. So the ones we've talked about, because we've got even more, actually, we've also got monthly meetups for parents and we've got monthly meetups for the for the for the students as well, for them just to get together. And essentially, it's like group coaching. It is. And yes. So they can talk about anything that, that is kind of getting in their way, because as we know, like with the workplace with our adults, it's not just about you know helping them in that setting you know a lot of what happens outside those settings so what happens at home is going to massively impact the academic setting is going to massively impact you know a workplace setting yeah we we take a very holistic approach you have yes. to um to our adhds so with that in mind um we would love to be able to support uh these very talented talented kids this is a tough tough time we understand that this is not easy and you can't do it alone. We wouldn't want you to do it alone. You shouldn't want that for yourself either. Uh, and we'd be happy to, to support you in whatever way we can, whether it's this program or whether it's one-to-one -one coaching. But uh, yeah, if you've got any questions, do get in touch. But uh, that ADHD lens, um, we have a parent online course that we can also yes. provide details of. But the more you get equip yourself with that lens, the better able you're gonna help your child. Lenny, was there anything? And yourself. Absolutely. No, as Stephanie said, uh, parent education is something I'm particularly passionate about uh, because that changed everything for me and I believe for other parents as well. When we hear ADHD, um, you know, a lot of things can go through our mind, but to really understand what is uh, behind some of the symptoms um, and what we as parents can do to uh, mitigate and understand um, what's happening is is it can be transformational so yes as stephanie said we we do offer support through coaching parent education uh, so do get in touch yeah no, oh, look i'm really like excited we are all really excited about this uh program i think it's the first of its kind uh and we've developed it because we've seen um how badly needed it is for for our kids with adhd and how much they benefit from some of the things that we're going to help them um, uncover and uh, getting that framework in place so that they don't self-sabotage, which they will. Uh, and that's, you know, that's where we all come in. And as you, as, as you the parent can help as well, because as parents, sometimes we can make it worse and we don't want to do that. We don't want that for you. We don't want the, you know, repercussions for you. And we certainly don't want to be sabotaging our children and getting in their way. So we would love to help you that's too. That's a great point. Yes. <laughs> because we're all guilty of it. We can't always, you know. It happens. Exactly. So no, we'd love for you to join us. Um, just some questions here. We'll talk about um, potential funding sources. 
in the email that we'll send out over the weekend. Does the child need to have the ADHD diagnosis? No, um, doesn't have to have the official diagnosis. If you suspect, if you, you know, if you understand ADHD well enough and you suspect, suspect that the child may have it, by all means, um, yeah, you can, you can sign up as well. But we will be talking about ADHD specifically. So yes. hopefully that uh, isn't going to be a problem. Shouldn't be, but um, yeah, pl please do, please do join. But thank you and well done for being here. I mean, just you guys being here, you're already doing, you're already championing your children. You're yes. already on the path. So it's really encouraging to see. So definitely we want to um, help you do more of that. And uh, yeah, make sure you fill up your tanks and we will send uh, you the email over the weekend and hope to see you guys uh, in the program soon. Thank you all. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the sunny weather. Bye, Lenny. Bye.